We are a generation of busyness, 1,000 things all screaming for our attention. We are master multitaskers, talking on the phone while trying to type an email and eat supper. A flurry of speed and efficiency. But I've come to understand a critical fact of life, nestled between the definitions of two seemingly similar but totally different words. And it completely changed my relationship with being busy. There is a massive difference between being efficient and being effective. Efficiency is performing a given task, whether important or not, in the most economical manner possible. Effectiveness is doing the things that take you closer to your goals. And here's the problem. We are really, really good at doing things that don't matter. Most people, you know, they major in minor things. They focus on stuff that doesn't matter. They know more about this celebrity going in and out of rehab than they do about their own personal development. Why would we want to excel in areas that do not take us closer to our goals? There's a certain level of status that we feel like we achieved by saying we worked X number of hours more than everybody else. And I used to think that it was heroic to be really busy. And I was really, really busy there for a long time. I worked full-time day job while shooting, editing, and posting a video every single day for over three months. And obviously to do that, I had to be very, very efficient with high standards and clear priorities. And I got a lot done. Um, I was very, very efficient and very busy. Um, but I didn't actually accomplish just a whole lot. And it taught me a lesson that I'll never, ever forget. They say we are the sum of our influences. And for me, that was definitely the case. Like I was, I was heavily influenced by, you know, hustle culture and like, you know, get after it kind of thing. And while it's shifting a bit, hustle culture still preaches that sleep is optional. And if you actually want to achieve your goals, then you have to be obsessed and get, you know, four to five hours of sleep and work continuously. In reality, hustle culture is simply a softer term for being a workaholic. Yet most people still make it seem heroic. But I tend to see busyness and efficiency differently now uh, because they don't mean what a lot of us think that they mean. Let's look at some of the facts surrounding this topic. And then after that, I'll share some of the lessons that I learned so that hopefully you don't have to go through what I did. <laughs> Fact number one, doing something unimportant well does not make it important. This is the problem with productivity hacks sometimes. We can be so focused on doing everything uh, efficiently and well and quick and getting it done and like how much stuff can you cram into a day that we sometimes forget to ask, is this actually that important to do? Fact number two, requiring a lot of time does not make a task important. Remember, what you do is infinitely more important than how you do it. Efficiency is still really, really important, but it's useless unless it's tied to the right things. And this is really harping on the fact of defining what is important to you. Without that being clearly defined, it's really difficult to, to not be busy because everything will seem urgent and very important unless you define for yourself this is important to me. If I accomplish this today, it will be a good day because this is the most important thing. Fact number three, being busy can be a form of laziness, lazy thinking and indiscriminate action. Being busy isn't all bad, but when we are busy simply for the sake of being busy or because it makes us feel important or good about ourselves, then it's a form of lazy thinking and, and indiscriminate action. And this can be actually kind of painful to admit because we have often tied busy to important. Suddenly, when we take that out and we take that away, we see it for what it actually is. And this isn't always the case. I'm not saying if you're busy, then that means you're lazy. Um, but I'm saying that sometimes it, it can be this way and we need to recognize that and at least acknowledge that that could potentially be happening. Like maybe we're tying our identity to being busy because it makes us feel significant or important. Fact number four, burnout can cause permanent damage. We often think that burnout is something that we just, you know, oh, we just bounce back from it in a week or two. Um, no, no, that's not, that's not how burnout works. Uh, burnout usually takes about twice as long to come out of it as it does to go into it.
And like I said, burnout can cause permanent emotional and mental damage. Uh, it's not something to be taken lightly. And the reason why I know this is because I burnt out like really hardcore um, after my extreme marathon sprint of um, being incredibly busy and making tons and tons of videos for an entire month straight. I, I completely burnt out uh, emotionally and physically and <laughs> mentally and spiritually and all of the above. And I had to take several years uh, I, I think I had to take about two years off. And so the repercussions of burnout are not something to take lightly. Uh, it, can, it can set you back many, many years uh, worth of work. And like I said, it can actually cause permanent damage. And as I said in the beginning, I've learned some very valuable lessons because I don't plan on repeating these mistakes anytime soon. Lesson number one. Busy is a choice. You are as busy as you allow yourself to be. And sometimes it's, it's actually hard for me to be sympathetic towards people that use their busyness as an excuse, um, as an excuse to lash out in frustration or anger or have low patience or, or you know, like, oh man, yeah, like I'd love to come hang out with you, but like, ah, you know, I'm just, just so busy right now. I just can't make it happen, you know? And that's that's them simply placing importance on something else which is totally fine, that's not a problem. But for me, I've learned that it's it's really not good to pretend like I have no say in the matter, like I have no choice in the fact that I'm busy so I have to go do this. So if I like leave a, a party earlier than everybody else, like, hey, like, why are you leaving? You know, I could be like, oh, you know, I'm just, I'm so busy right now with my YouTube videos, I just, I have to go finish one because I'm, I'm behind, you know? And that's not true, I don't have to do that. I could skip that video, I don't have to post it. I don't have to make it. I, I, I have no obligation other than the standards I set on myself. By saying that I have to go do this, it makes me a slave to that standard. Whereas I'm the one that created that standard and I can change it if I want. And so just realizing that I'm still in control is really powerful. And so when I do something like that or I want to go do something, I try to at least be honest with my decision. And if I can't think of something that justifies my choice, then maybe I need to reconsider. You know, so if I'm leaving and they're like, hey, why are you leaving? It's like, well, I have set a goal that I'm gonna make two videos a week, one video a week, whatever that is. And it's important to me to uphold this standard to myself. So I'm gonna go home and work on my video. To me, that's totally different. <laughs> Most of this comes back to taking ownership for the decisions that put us where we are. And sometimes we end up in a place in life where we didn't make a decision that put us there. Um, it, it, just, it just happens. And in a case like that, it's still our responsibility of what are we gonna do with where we're at? What are we gonna do with the, the hand that has been dealt to us? And taking control and taking responsibility for that and control of your actions is a critical first step in moving in the right direction. But when we don't place that responsibility on ourselves, we give up our control to change it. And I used to be there, you know, where I would I would throw around my my busyness as like some sort of flex or some sort of excuse or reason why I was always late for stuff or you know had a short temper or couldn't get stuff done or couldn't accomplish this or that. And I know that that frantic feeling, you know, because I had those standards at such a high place and I was such a slave to them. Like I actually forgot that I was the one that set the standards. Like that I was still in control of my actions. At first, it was really nice because it forced me to be motivated, but once I kind of switched that and started taking a little bit more ownership of like, uh, you know, actually I don't, I don't have to do this, but I'm choosing to do it because it's important to me. It carried more weight and it meant more to me. And it was also very liberating because I was then in control to be able to change it. Lesson number two, clear goals are the best filter. A lot of people think that clear focus comes from choosing what to say yes to, when in reality, it actually comes from learning to say no to all but a few things. And when we don't have clear goals and a, a vision of where we're going, it's incredibly hard to say no to all the good opportunities that arise because great opportunities will come to you all throughout your life, but not all of them are things that you should take or not all of them are things that will take you closer to the direction you're trying to go. They may be great options, but they won't actually take you in the direction you want to go. And I see that in my own life quite a bit. You know, there's there's a lot of things that I could be doing in my life that are they're great options, they're good things, um, but they don't align with the direction that I'm taking my life in, and they don't align with 
what is most important to me. Saying no to those things is hard, but it's much harder to say no to those things when you don't have a clear vision of where you're going. And so when we do have clear goals, we know right away when something fits or when it doesn't. Like I said, it takes that weight out of the decision making. And the goal here is to find your inefficiencies in order to eliminate them and to find your strengths so that you can multiply them. Going from dreams to actionable goals and progress actually isn't as hard as some people think, but it's incredibly important. So if you want to learn more how to do that, this video in the dead center of the screen will give you all the stuff that you need for that.